WSN9's Michael Quandre joining us live now from Black Lives Matter Plaza in downtown DC. Michael, you're down there in the scene now. What can you tell us? Well, Larry, I can tell you that overnight, a few dozen protesters were still out here well after 3.30 this morning. But I want to show you all what we're seeing right now. You can still see DC police officers uh, guarding St. John's Episcopal Church right here in Northwest DC. Uh, this is the same spot where demonstrators tried to set up an autonomous zone just days ago, but the city blocked it from happening. Now, I want you all to take a look at this video that we shot from overnight. You can see that protesters were not violent or destructive. One person did jump over a fence at St. John's, but that situation was quickly de-escalated. Now, I spoke with some protesters about why some of them continue to come out here until 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning sometimes, and they said it is simple, Mike. They said that uh, it is important for people in power to see them, to know that they are still planning to be out here and fight for their causes no matter what. They do not plan on stopping their fight anytime soon. Now, one other thing has been has become center stage in some of these protests here, and that is autopsy reports. I know some of those things can be confusing to many of us average shows out here, right? And that's because autopsy reports can reveal that someone's death was a homicide, but still no charges will be filed or uh, the killer will never go to jail. And here's why. George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Rayshard Brooks are the most recent people thrusted into the spotlight. All three of them were killed at the hands of police. Autopsy reports for Floyd and Brooks revealed their deaths were homicides, and officers in each case have been arrested and charged with crimes. But in Taylor's case, an autopsy was done, but the findings of the report are not public, and none of the officers are currently facing criminal charges. She didn't deserve this. When the medical examiner certifies a death, issues the death certificate, the two main components are the cause of death and the manner of death. Dr. Jonathan Arden with the National Association of Medical Examiners. The manner of death is the explanation for how the cause of death came about. The manner of death could be anything from natural, an accident or suicide, to a homicide or declared undetermined. So if one person injures another and the injury causes death, then that is by our definition a homicide. Our use of the term homicide does not require that a criminal act occur. That part is up to police and prosecutors. Let's take Freddie Gray's case from Baltimore in 2015, for example. Gray was arrested and injured in police custody and later died in the hospital in April that year. By May, six officers were charged. And the next month in June, Gray's autopsy results declared his death a homicide. One officer had a hung jury. A judge found a second cop guilty on all charges and all other charges were dropped against the remaining officers. The medical examiner is not determining through the investigation and autopsy whether a crime has occurred. But the medical examiner may well produce findings in the autopsy that are useful for the pursuit of criminal charges. And the findings and the interpretations may be useful to the defense as well. Now, I want to be clear here in this story, Dr. Arden was not speaking about any specific case, but he was more so speaking in general. Now, I want to say that the biggest takeaway here is that uh, even though an autopsy report may reveal information about what led up to someone's death, that information will not always lead to charges being filed. And that is why you continue to see protesters coming out here day after day, hitting the streets. They are not only demanding for those officers to be charged or arrested, but they are also calling for the courts system to also come through with some convictions. I'm reporting live in downtown DC at Black Lives Matter Plaza. Back to you in the studio. Michael Quander, thank you.